what if we told you that the team that won every race this season failed to qualify for Q3 and finished off the podium for the first time in years? Performance dropped due to FIA regulation clarifications? Well, that's exactly what happened to Red Bull at the Singapore Grand Prix. In this video, we are going to explain how and why Red Bull lost their edge. Red Bull has been the dominant force in the 2023 season, winning every single race so far with their RB19 car, which is widely regarded as one of the most advanced and innovative machines in F1 history. The team has been able to exploit the new ground effect regulations to create a fast car, stable and efficient. With a powerful Honda engine and a flexible floor that generates massive amounts of downforce. The RB19 has been unbeatable on every track, from high-speed circuits like Monza and Silverstone to twisty tracks like Monaco and Hungary. The team's drivers, Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez, have been in a league of their own, with Verstappen leading the championship by a huge margin and Perez providing solid support as his teammate. However, things took a dramatic turn at the Singapore Grand Prix, where Red Bull suddenly lost their edge over their rivals. For the first time since the 2018 Russian Grand Prix, Red Bull failed to qualify both cars in Q3, with Verstappen only managing P7 and Perez P11. The team was clearly struggling with their car's balance and grip, as they could not get their tires to work properly on the hot and humid street circuit. The team's race pace was better than their qualifying pace, but it was not enough to challenge for the podium. Verstappen finished fourth after being overtaken by Lewis Hamilton on fresher tires, while Perez finished sixth after a late pit stop. It was Red Bull's worst result of the season and their first race without a podium finish since the 2019 Brazilian Grand Prix. So what happened to Red Bull in Singapore? How did they go from being unbeatable to being uncompetitive in just one weekend? Well, several factors might have contributed to their downfall, but one of them stands out. The FIA's Regulation Clarifications The FIA is the governing body of Formula One and they're responsible for setting and enforcing the rules of the sport. One of their main objectives is to ensure fair and safe competition among all teams and drivers. To achieve this, they sometimes issue clarifications or amendments to the existing regulations, either to close loopholes or address safety concerns. These clarifications or amendments can have a significant impact on the performance of the cars, as they might force some teams to change or modify some aspects of their design or setup. Before the Singapore Grand Prix, the FIA issued two distinct regulation clarifications that might have affected Red Bull's performance. The first one was regarding the vertical oscillation measurement of the cars and the associated floor plank flexibility. The second one was regarding four specific changes to be implemented in 2023 to further address the bouncing issue. The vertical oscillation measurement is a way of checking how much the car moves up and down during a lap. This is important because it affects how much downforce the car generates from its floor and diffuser. The more downforce a car has, the faster it can go through corners. However, there is a limit to how much downforce a car can have, as too much downforce can also create too much drag and slow down the car on straights. Therefore, teams try to find an optimal balance between downforce and drag by adjusting their ride height and suspension settings. The floor plank is a wooden panel that runs underneath the car from front to rear. It's designed to prevent teams from running their cars too low to the ground, as this would give them an unfair aerodynamic advantage. The floor plank has a minimum thickness that must be respected at all times. If a team runs their car too low, they risk wearing out their floor plank and failing the post-race scrutineering. The FIA suspects that some teams have been using flexible floor planks that bend under load and allow them to run their cars lower than allowed without wearing out their floor planks. This would give them more downforce than permitted by the rules. To prevent this, the FIA decided to change how they measured the vertical oscillation of the cars from spa onwards. Instead of measuring it at four fixed points on each side of the car, they decided to measure it at any point along each side of the car. This would make it harder for teams to hide any illegal flexibility in their floor planks. The FIA has announced four additional changes to be implemented in 2023, subject to World Motorsport Council approval, in order to further address the bouncing issues. These changes include an increase of 3 kilograms in the minimum mass of the car, from 798 kilograms to 801 kilograms, an increase of 2 millimeters in the minimum thickness of the floor plank, from 25 millimeters to 27 millimeters, and 
and an increase of 20% in the minimum stiffness of the floor plank, from 50 newtons per millimeter to 60 newtons per millimeter, and an increase of 50% in the minimum stiffness of the rear wing, from 1,000 newtons per millimeter to 1,500 newtons per millimeter. These changes are intended to make the cars heavier, thicker, and stiffer, and therefore less prone to bouncing and flexing. However, they might also make the cars slower, less agile, and less efficient. It is widely believed that Red Bull is one of the teams that have been using flexible floor planks to gain an aerodynamic edge over their rivals. The team has been very secretive about its floor design and has even used covers and umbrellas to hide it from prying eyes. The team has also been very vocal on defending their floor legality and has insisted that they have passed all the FIA tests so far. However, the FIA's regulation clarifications might have forced Red Bull to change or modify their floor design or setup and this might have affected their performance in Singapore. The team might have had to raise their ride height or stiffen their suspension to comply with the new rules, and this might have reduced their downforce and grip levels. The team might also have had to compromise their aerodynamic balance or efficiency to adapt to the new conditions. The team might have also struggled to find the optimal tire pressure and temperature for their new setup, as they could not rely on their previous data and experience. It is uncertain whether the FIA's regulation clarifications are the sole reason for Red Bull's performance drop in Singapore. However, they might have played a significant role. Other factors that could have contributed to Red Bull's underwhelming performance include the nature of the Singapore track, which is a low-speed, high-downforce street circuit not ideally suited to Red Bull's strengths. The hot and humid weather conditions posed a challenge for the team to manage tire degradation and car cooling. Additionally, Mercedes and Ferrari's improved performance this season has increased the competition levels, and they were able to challenge Red Bull in Singapore for the first time this year. It's hard to say for sure what Red Bull's chances are for the rest of the season, as every track is different and every race is unpredictable. However, there are reasons to be optimistic for Red Bull fans. Red Bull still has a comfortable lead in both the Drivers' and Constructors' Championships, with Verstappen ahead of Hamilton by 72 points, and Red Bull ahead of Mercedes by 134 points. Additionally, Red Bull still has a very fast and reliable car that has proved to be competitive on every type of track so far. Therefore, it's too early to write off Red Bull's chances for this season. They might have had a bad weekend in Singapore, but they might bounce back stronger in the next races. They might have faced some regulation clarifications from the FIA, but they might find new ways to innovate and optimize their car. They might have lost some performance advantage over their rivals, but they might still have enough pace and points to secure both titles. However, they cannot afford to be complacent or overconfident. They still have six races left to go, and anything can happen in Formula One. They still have fierce competition from Mercedes and Ferrari, who will not give up without a fight. They still have potential threats from other teams and drivers, who might spoil their plans or take away valuable points. They still have possible challenges from external factors such as weather, safety cars, or incidents. Therefore, they need to stay focused and determined. They need to work hard and smart. They need to analyze their problems and find solutions. They need to learn from their mistakes and improve their performance. They need to fight for every point and every position. They need to do everything they can to secure their first drivers and constructors championships since 2013. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. We would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this topic. Until next time, bye.